field moving out of turn four. They'll get the one to go signal this time. So many stories tonight. Last time this car will ever race here at Daytona. Last race for Dale Earnhardt Jr. for DEI at Daytona. Final stories from Pit Road. Ladies first, here's Lindsay Zarniak. <laughs> For Matt Kenseth, Daytona in February, it's very frustrating. In the past three Daytona 500s, his car's been great, but their day has ended in heartbreak. In July is when Matt Kenseth rebounds. The last two races here, he's had top ten finishes. He looks to do the same tonight, starting from third. Ralph Shaheen. This racetrack can get really slick in July. Tony Stewart thinks that could be an advantage for him since he grew up dirt track racing. He just wishes everybody would stop reminding him and his team that they have not won a points race yet this year. They're very confident. They've been very fast. And if it wasn't for some bad luck, they might have multiple victories. That first win could come here tonight. He has two points race wins right here at Daytona in July, Matt Yoakum. Ralph, it's been a special weekend for the stars of today, getting a chance to spend time with the heroes of yesterday. But nobody has had a bigger weekend than Kevin Harvick. Friday, he left his right footprint and handprint in the Daytona 500 Champions Walk of Fame. On Thursday, he quit one practice early. The second practice, he left the race car all smiles, knowing handling is going to be so important, and he has a great race car. Finished sixth with it at Talladega. He's hoping to become the first guy to sweep both races at Daytona since 82, when he was seven years old. To Marty Snyder. Well, Matt, the Daytona 500 for Clint Boyer was not that good. He left here upside down and on fire, but tonight might be his lucky night. Check out the date. It is 07, 07, 07. And of course, Boyer drives the 07 car. If he's able to win tonight, he'll become the third first-time winner in the last five races. This team qualified 12th, but the pit stall they got tonight, number seven. How about that, Larry Mack? Well, Marty, I think it's going to be a night of comers and goers because so many of these teams, they have no idea what car's going to handle like. But a lot like Wally and Bill, I want to watch those guys at the back of the field because they knew they had to qualify on time. They had to be very aggressive with setup. They had to be very aggressive with engines. So my question is how much do they step across the line of the durability of these engines, go back to the last restrictor plate impound race at Talladega, half of the go or go homers blew engines on into that race. Thanks, Larry. Hope all you guys have a great night down there for the Pepsi 400. You excited? This is this is <laughs> good racing right here. A lot of fun. It's under the lights, and this is the Pepsi 400. It's the Pepsi 400. Let me tell you something. It's Daytona, and that's what you got to look at. And I don't mean to discount these guys that are there at the back of the pack. Boris said, had to qualify last time, set on a pole, and went all the way to the front all day long. So these guys can't come from the back to the front. Elliot Sadler apparently has a problem. No first or second gear. Only the third time in the modern era NASCAR has raced on July 7th. The other two races were both won by an Earnhardt. Junior and senior were wide open in green. up to full speed. You saw Elliott Sadler dropping to the back. Jeff Gordon trying to pull away at the front. Now they're two by two. Wow. Five bonus points for leading that lap. Jeff Gordon got him. Update from Marty Snyder. Bill, real quick, Elliot Sadler said before the start, as you mentioned, no first or second gear, said he just wanted to get out of the way. He didn't want to get run over. And I think the reason why he didn't drop to the back, Kyle, is because if he would have dropped to the back, the pack would have left him. He at least got rolling enough to where he's at least hung on to the back of the pack right now. Yeah, and that's a great observation because if he had dropped to the back, like you said, he started, what, 15th, 18th, 19th, wherever he's at in points, and he dropped back to almost 42nd or 43rd, but he was able to keep a car behind him that kept him pushed up in the pack. What's going to be interesting is if we follow that story for the rest of the night to see what his pit road is, because everything about pit road is second gear at a certain RPM, and if he doesn't have second gear, what's the RPM?
him going to be in third, or how's he going to get down pit road? Well, and also, even if he comes in with a pack of cars, they're going to leave him. If you don't have those two gears, you're in big trouble. Sadler started 22nd. I think, you know, after a lap or two here, I think you'll start seeing these guys break out the three wide. I mean, the cars are moving around a lot. Whoa, Stewart cut it close there on Jimmy Johnson. And they do. There's going to, you could just tell those first couple laps, these guys were already anxious. These guys are pumped up ready for this race because of two reasons. And, and the main reason being, they haven't been in race configuration and race conditions since Thursday afternoon when they did all their practice. They just came in Friday and won one single lap. And as you know, Wally, you, you just kind of get out there and run your lap and that's it. And then uh, some of Oh, we got trouble. Jeff Green in the 66 and Casey Kane. And there was a report that somewhere back in the field that someone might have been leaking. Caution is out. Caution is out. Fine. That almost looked the way they were hooked there, Kyle, that somebody thought somebody was clear and wasn't. Yeah, it, it, it almost looked like, and you, you can't tell until we see it, but it's almost like somebody jogged left or Not right when you thought somebody wasn't, wasn't there. Let's take a look from upstairs. First caution of the night. Yep, and that's exactly what it was. Yeah. Jeff Green thought he was clear. Casey Kane was just up on his right rear quarter panel, and there wasn't enough room. And, and it's not like you can jump out of the out of the gas really hard or jump on the brakes. You got people right behind it, but you can see Casey Kane was there. Yeah, Casey Casey was there, but I don't think Jeff had any idea that he was there because this early in the race, Jeff was driving a conservative line. He just swung out a little bit to get down in the corner, and I don't think either one of them knew it. And Jeff had such a solid run last week at New Hampshire. And, and I'm gonna tell you something. And, and Jeff has been taken out of races at Daytona. <laughs> just like this on two or three different occasions when I was behind him. Uh, and uh, not of his fault. Just that this is just a racing incident. Three right here. This and is it all. was nothing. It was so close. I mean, just... All right, gonna have a wreck here behind us. Wave them off, wave them off here, wave them off. I tell you what, when we see the damage, if we could get a close-up of the damage on the nine car, you'll be surprised at how little damage it really is on the, on the, on the right front, on that front. It's just barely caved that corner in over on the left side. His and biggest damage is on the right horrible. side. Yeah, it's just, they could they could get that left front fixed. That's a, Larry. I mean, as you know, they've got to get that part of the car fixed because of the aerodynamics. I mean, there's no question, Wally. The, right the most fence. important part of that race car is the front fenders and the rear spoiler. But the one thing I want to point out: we talked in the pre-race about how important the spotters on top of the grandstand. Where those guys were going out of the trial down the turn one, it's almost the worst situation for the spotter because they're actually driving away from the spotter. All he's looking at is the back of the car. And I know when I'm spotted here, what I've told the guys, you're on your own for a second to like get you down in the turn one. You know, also, Larry, right up against the wall, along the front straightaway, you're in the shadow if you're up right against the wall. Tough situation for the spotter right there. So Kane on pit road early, five laps complete here in the Pepsi 400. Get the left front on. Get the left front. Green to the garage. Yeah, Green's got a little bit more damage there than Casey Kane. Marty? Yeah, Bill, the damage uh, not really as bad as they thought it would be for Casey Kane. They're really focusing here on the left front. They've already taken right side tires. They put on uh, left side tires just now. They're going to patch with Bear Bond, this very front left front of the car for Casey Kane, get him back out on the racetrack to update his teammate Elliot Sadler. He said in first and second gear, sounds like there's a real bad rattle in the transmission, so he's not there. He has to start in third. As you guys pointed out, he is very concerned about pit road. Thanks, Marty. The only full-screen commercial content in tonight's race broadcast comes from our local cable partners. We're required to give them three breaks an hour. Here comes the first one. It's under caution, and our wide-open coverage continues in 90 seconds. 